My name is Michelle and welcome to Advanced Theming. In the previous series, we discussed .info files, which are the configuration files for your themes, which tells Drupal that you are a theme, what regions you have, what CSS files you have, and what JavaScript you have. We also discussed template files. Those are the, the files ending in .tpl.php, like your page TPL or your node TPL. But in this series, we're actually going to talk about template.php. This is the file where all of your functions live. And we are going to discuss preprocess functions and overriding theming functions. So what if there isn't a variable for what you want to do in your page TPL or in your node TPL? You've already done a, a, a dump of all possible variables, and it's just not there. You've got something else unique and custom. Well, I'm sure you've heard this on multiple occasions, but you actually don't put complicated PHP code in your TPL files. You put that somewhere uh, complicated logic in your template.php. So we are actually going to discuss today how to create those new variables and override existing ones. So welcome to template.php, the theming nin ninja's weapon of choice. So here, like I said, we are going to set new variables that you will have access to in any, any of your tpl.php files. So template.php, it's all PHP code. There is no HTML. It's the exact opposite of a tpl.php. It's the place where you put extensive logic and even sometimes write SQL queries. By separating out all of this PHP functionality into a unique file, you're now keeping your node TPL and your page TPL files very, very clean. It actually makes it easier for a designer to come in and change the markup and work with the CSS that's associated with that. Template.php, like I said before, provides all of the variables for you that you have access to in your, uh, in your TPL files. And also, we can go in and we can override some of Drupal's functionality. Um, there are several functions, like theming a username, that we can go in and say, you know, Drupal does it pretty well, but I've got, to, I want to do a little bit better. I want to add another character in there, change the markup a little bit. And in your uh, template.php, you can override any of those. First thing I want to talk to you about are preprocess functions. This is where you create new variables or override existing variables. The first function is commonly known as the theme name underscore preprocess. Now you would replace theme name with the name of your theme. For example, Bartik underscore preprocess, or you can go ahead if you're following our tutorial, do 960 robots underscore preprocess. This function gets called all the time. It's the biggest global function. To save on resources, you actually can go ahead and do a switch and check and say, OK, well, if it's actually a page, let's go ahead and call that function. Um, you can be even more specific. There is theme name underscore preprocess underscore hook, where that hook will be replaced with something like page or node. So anytime a page is loaded, your Bartik underscore preprocess underscore page will get called. Um, you'll notice that in both of these examples, dollar sign vars is being passed in, and that is where all of your variables are that then at the very end get sent to your template files. So you can go ahead and say dollar vars, my new variable, equals some sort of value, and that will then be available to you in your other files. Another thing that template.php is useful for is overriding theme functions. The most common example would be theme username. That is, for example, in um, the top of the node when it say, oh, submitted by Joe on this date. So the submitted by Joe part, the way that Joe is written, that's their username. So if you don't like how that's being handled, you can go ahead and copy that function from core in and rename the theme username to whatever yours is. So it could be Bartik underscore username, and then it gets called. 
So very simple, you go ahead, you find the original function, you copy it into your template.php file, and you rename any of the prefixes and make amendments as you need fit. Don't forget to clear the cache though. So the way Drupal looks at theme functions is in the code, in a module, theme breadcrumb is written. And immediately it goes and looks and says, hey, does the current theme have any specification about what that means? So it goes and looks for my theme underscore breadcrumb. If it finds it, great, goes ahead and use it, <clears throat> and that's the output. If it doesn't find it, it then moves on to the default of theme underscore breadcrumb and whatever the output of that is. Previously, in Drupal 6, there was also PHP template breadcrumb, but you don't need to worry about that any longer. So theme functions allow your theme to have the last crack at the outputted HTML, and you have complete control over that. Just by naming your function following a certain pattern, that's what gives you the power. So theme functions themselves are never directly called. You never call theme underscore username. You never even type in your modules to call a specific variation of it, a Bartik underscore username. You always utilize the syntax of printing theme parentheses, and then in single quotes, whatever type of theme function that is. And the reason you do that is that actually triggers the Drupal system to go ahead and to look for, does the current theme have an implementation of this? And to utilize that first, and if not, then to go find what the default behavior should be. Very, very, very powerful. The theme override system allows you to completely control all HTML output just by typing something very, very simple in your template.php file. So the theme function itself will always call the correct version. So when do you know to use a tpl.php file or to use your template.php file with theme functions and preprocess functions? First bit to think about, a tpl.php is for markup. It's for HTML and very, very simple print statements only. This is the kind of file a designer could pick up and go, okay, I need to change this div to an h2 and work with that. The theme functions in template.php and preprocess functions in template.php are very, very PHP code heavy, limited markup in there. Because whenever possible, your modules are also going to be providing these TPL files, and then your themes can override them. Complex logic always will take the place in your template.php to create a variable to pass to your tpls.phps. Just to recap what we have done in the previous series and what we're going to talk about going forward is there are three steps to theming. The first is your .info file. This is where you say, hey, I'm a theme. I have these um, different kinds of CSS files and JavaScript files. Then there's also the template files. This is your page template and your node template or even your node article templates. And then going forward in our advanced theming series, we are going to discuss template.php, where we can create new variables to pass to our template files, where we can change variables, and also where we can adjust markup for simple functions that are used regularly, like theme username or theme breadcrumb. I want to take a moment to compare the two different kinds of files the TPL files and template.php. If we take a look at Bartik, the theme that comes with Drupal core, and we go ahead and open our page TPL and our template.php, we will be able to notice some differences. For our page TPL, the biggest thing you're going to notice 
is that we throughout the file have opening and closing PHP tags. So this line, few lines right here, is a PHP statement that says if dollar logo exists, then we need to print what's on the following lines and then simply saying, okay, that's the end of our if statement. So a tpl.php file is full of if a variable exists, print something, potentially that variable with markup around it, uh, and then you end if statements. There's no complicated logic in here. Differently from that, if we open our template.php file, you'll notice that there is an opening PHP tag and that is it. All of the contents of this file is 100% pure PHP. There's no markup in here. There are functions followed by functions followed by functions in this file. And what I wanted to really show you is that if we go back, a designer can open up a tpl.php file and very easily say, you know what? I really don't want this to have a div ID of site slogan. I want it to be something else. And go in and make those changes to the file without any problems whatsoever. There is no complicated logic going on. If you go to a template.php file, there's no markup. So this is where variables are being set and, and also changed. Um, the biggest thing to remember with theming in Drupal, markup goes in tpl.php, and then php logic goes in template.php. And I find it very, very confusing that the nomenclature for these are so similar. So just remember a template file is your page TPL, your node TPL, and template.php is where all of your functions live. Oh, <laughs>